Welcome to our lecture on chi-square tests. This lecture covers chapter 17 of clear-sighted statistics. What are chi-square tests? These are the most common non-parametric tests. Unlike parametric tests, non-parametric tests make no assumptions about the population parameters or how the population data are distributed. Chi refers to the 22nd letter of the Greek alphabet. Chi has nothing to do with the Chinese principle of qi, which stands for the vital energy of all living beings. It is also not related to the Hebrew word chai, which stands for life dedicated to kindness, thoughtfulness, and selflessness. This lecture has seven objectives. One, the characteristics of the chi-square distribution will be presented. Two, the requirements of chi-square test will be explained. 3. The a priori statistical power of a chi-square test will be calculated using g-power. 4. A chi-square goodness of fit test will be conducted when the expected frequencies are equal. 5. A chi-square goodness of fit test will be conducted when the expected frequencies are not equal. 6. A chi-square test for contingency tables, which are also known as a chi-square test of independence, will be conducted. 7. We will conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test to test the normality of the data. Chi-square history. In 1900, Carl Pearson introduced chi-square tests. Let's review the characteristics of chi-square. Chi-square is the sum of the square difference between the observed frequencies, or O, and the expected frequencies, or E, over the expected frequencies. Here is the formula for the chi-square test statistic. Chi-square equals the sum of the observed frequencies minus expected frequencies squared over the expected frequencies. The smallest possible value of chi-square is zero. A chi-square score of zero would mean the observed frequencies are identical to the expected frequencies. Chi-square is defined by degrees of freedom. How degrees of freedom are calculated depends on the type of chi-square test. Here are four chi-square distributions. As the degrees of freedom increase, the distribution becomes less skewed to the right. Like ANOVA, chi-square is an omnibus or global test. When there are more than two categories, we cannot determine which pairs of categories differ. We must run a post hoc analysis when the null hypothesis is rejected. We will not, however, cover these post hoc analyses. Data sources for chi-square. Data for the observed frequencies, O or F sub O, which stands for the frequency of the observed data, are the result of counts. Calculating the expected frequencies is not difficult, but if the expected frequencies are not properly calculated, the test statistic will be wrong. For goodness of fit tests, expected frequencies can be calculated using the relative frequencies from existing research. When working with contingency tables, expected frequencies are found by the row totals times the column totals over the grand total. Requirements for chi-square tests. The categories must be independent and mutually exclusive. Expected frequencies for each category must be at least five observations. When this requirement cannot be met, some categories must be combined. To do this, however, there must be more than two categories. There are two basic types of chi-square tests. One, goodness of fit tests. Two, contingency table tests. The first goodness of fit test example is the simplest of chi-square goodness of fit tests. Its expected frequencies are equal. The chi-square goodness of fit test compares the distribution of observed frequencies to the distribution of expected frequencies to determine how closely the frequencies match or fit. This test is sometimes called a one-way chi-square test. Degrees of freedom equals k minus one, where k is the number of categories. The null and alternate hypotheses. Please note, the null and alternate hypotheses do not use mathematical notation. The null hypothesis states that the observed frequencies match or are equal to the expected frequencies. 
The Alton hypothesis states that the observed frequencies do not match or are unequal to the expected frequencies. There are a variety of ways these hypotheses can be stated. They should be framed in the context of the research question. The critical value for chi-square is based on degrees of freedom. For our example, we will use a significance level, an alpha of 5%. There are six categories, k equals 6. Six categories, there are five degrees of freedom found by 6 minus 1. The critical value of chi-square at a 5% significance level with five degrees of freedom is 11.070. The critical value for chi-square can also be found using Excel's chi-square.inv.rt function. This function has two arguments, one the significance level and two the degrees of freedom. When using Excel, round the critical value to the thousandths column. That's three decimal places past the decimal point. The decision rule, reject the null hypothesis if chi-square is greater than 11.070. The red tail on this chart shows the rejection region. If the calculated value of the chi-square test statistic is greater than 11.070, the null hypothesis should be rejected. As with the t-distribution, we can use the chi-square critical values table to obtain an estimate of the p-value. Excel, however, provides a precise calculation of the p-value. Excel's chi-square.dist.rt function returns the p-value. This function has two arguments. The first is the calculated value of the test statistic. The second is the degrees of freedom. Let's conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test with equal expected frequencies. Your friend decided to start selling her homemade cookies at street fairs and farmers markets. Her cookies are large, approximately six inches in diameter. Everyone who has tasted them says they are delicious. She has six recipes, almond sugar, brown sugar shortbread, chocolate chip, gingerbread, oatmeal, and peanut butter. Each recipe is considered a separate category, so K equals six. She has no idea how well each recipe will sell. She will analyze her sales by assuming that each of the six recipes will have equal sales. Here are the sales from the first event. She sold a total of 180 cookies. Her chocolate chip cookies was the best seller with sales of 44 cookies. The research question, do the recipes sell equally well? Based on this research question, what are the expected frequencies? The expected frequencies can be found with a simple formula. E equals N over K. 180 over 6, the expected frequency is 30 cookies for each recipe. This goodness of fit test will determine whether the observed sales shown in this table match the expected sales of 30 cookies per recipe. Ideally, an a priori statistical power calculation should have been done before the data are collected. That said, we need to conduct an a priori statistical power calculation. We will conduct this analysis using G power. The test family is chi-square tests. The statistical test, goodness of fit test, contingency tables. The type of power analysis is a priori. We will estimate Cohen's W effect size at 27%. This is a moderate effect. The significance level equals 0.05 or 5%. The desired level of statistical power is 0.8 or 80%. Degrees of freedom equals 5, found by 6 categories minus 1. A sample of 176 cookies will yield 80% statistical power. So our sample of 180 cookies will provide sufficient statistical power, assuming the achieved effect size is not too far off. Step 2. Select the significance level. As stated when the a priori power calculation was conducted, a 5% significance level has been selected. Step 3. State the null and alternate hypotheses. Null hypothesis. The six cookie recipes have equal cells. Alternate hypothesis. The six cookie recipes have unequal sales. Remember, 
The hypotheses should always be written in the context of the problem. Step 4. Compose the decision rule. The critical value for chi-square with 5 degrees of freedom and a 5% significance level is 11.070. To repeat, we could also use Excel's chi-square.inv.rt function to find the critical value. This function has two arguments, the significance level and the degrees of freedom. The decision rule, reject the null hypothesis if chi-square is greater than 11.070. Step 5. Calculate the test statistic, p-value, and effect size. Here again is the formula for calculating the chi-square test statistic. Your friend expected each of her six cookies to sell equally well. The expected frequencies for each cookie are 30, found by dividing total cookie sales of 180 by the number of cookie recipes, 6. The calculated value of the chi-square test statistic is 14.8. 867. The p-value is 0 0.0109 or 1.09 percent. The value of Cohen's W effect size is 0 0.2874, which is a moderate effect and very close to the estimated effect size used in the a priori statistical power calculation. Interpreting Cohen's W effect size. Cohen's W effect size for chi-square range from 0 to 1. 0 is interpreted as no relationship or no effect, while 1 indicates a perfect relationship or a very strong effect. Step 6. Decide and report. Our decision, with a chi-square test statistic as high as 14.867 and a p-value as low as 1.09%, we reject the null hypothesis. Conclusion, the six cookie recipes do not sell equally well. If the significance level were set at 1%, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than 1%. We have statistically significant results. The six cookie recipes do not sell equally well. But do we have practical significance? The results have practical significance too. Here is why. We have a moderate effect size of 28.74%, but more importantly, the baker can use the test findings that the cookies do not sell equally well to manage inventory better. Let's turn to a chi-square goodness of fit test with unequal expected frequencies. Step 1. Test Setup Your friend is preparing for her second farmer's market. Based on the results of the first test, she has adjusted the number of cookies she makes for each recipe because she knows that the six recipes do not sell equally well. She also decides to sell her cookies at a bigger farmer's market. With the first example, the conclusion was that the six cookie recipes do not sell equally well. So what are the expected frequencies now? Use the relative frequencies from the first day of sales to find the new expected frequencies for each of the six recipes. For example, chocolate chip cookies represented 24% of total sales, so the expected frequency for chocolate chip cookies will now be 24% of total sales. Brown sugar shortbread cookies will have an expected frequency of 12% of sales. Total sales for the second event were 360 cookies. Expected frequencies per cookie was found by multiplying the relative frequencies from the first sale by the total sales from the second sale. Note, these expected frequencies have been rounded off to the nearest whole number. We need to conduct another a priori statistical power calculation because we now expect a lower Cohen's W effect size due to better inventory management. We reduce the estimated effect size to 0 0.19, which is just below the threshold for a moderate effect. We need a sample size of 356 cookies to achieve 80% power. The required sample size increased because the estimated Cohen's W effect size is now smaller. Step 2. Select the significance level. A 5% significance level has been selected. Step 3. State the null and alternate hypotheses. Null hypothesis. The observed sales per cookie match expected sales. Alternate hypothesis. 
The observed sales per cookie do not match expected sales. Note, the framework for the null and alternate hypothesis is no longer equal sales. This revision was made because the hypothesis should always be written in the context of the research problem. Step four, compose the decision rule. The decision rule is unchanged because the significance level and degrees of freedom are unchanged. The decision rule, reject the null hypothesis if chi-square is greater than 11.070. Step five, calculate the test statistic, p-value, and effect size. The value of the chi-squared test statistic is 11.042, which is just below the critical value of 11.070. The p-value is 5.05%, which is just above the significance level of 5%. And the effect size is 0.1751, or 17.51%. This is a weak effect. Step 6, decide and report. Given the decision rule, reject the null hypothesis if chi-square is greater than 11.070, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. The test statistic of 11.042 is less than the critical value, and the p-value of 5.05% is higher than the significance level. We lack statistical significance. Conclusion, the observed distribution of cookie sales among the six recipes match expectations. This is great news for your friend who wants to manage her inventory better. Do we have practical significance given the lack of statistical significance? The effect size of 17.51% is weak, but the information uncovered by this chi-squared test provides useful insights for the baker who needs to manage inventory. The results tell the baker that she is getting better at managing her inventory. The results, therefore, have practical significance. The baker, however, should continue to monitor sales to further refine inventory management. Let's turn to a chi-square test of independence, which is also called a chi-square contingency table test. Step 1, test setup. Since 1969, the Gallup organization has been polling Americans about their attitudes towards the legalization of marijuana. In 1969, only 12% of respondents favored legalizing marijuana. In 2019, 66% of respondents favored legalizing marijuana. Research question. Is a person's position on the legalization of marijuana dependent on a person's political identification? Here are the survey results from the 2019 Gallup poll broken down by political identification. 51% or 199 of the 393 Republicans said yes, marijuana should be legal. 194 answered no, don't know, or did not answer. 67% or 442 of the 655 independents said yes, marijuana should be legal. 213 answered no, don't know, or did not answer. 78%, or 352 of the 450 Democrats, said yes, marijuana should be legal. 98 answered no, don't know, or did not answer. The total sample size was 1,498. We need to conduct an a priori statistical power calculation using g-power. We do this calculation despite the fact that Gallup has already collected the data. By clicking on the Determine button and entering the data, G-Power calculates the effect size as 0.27. This is a moderate effect. The significance level, or alpha, is 5%. The desired level of statistical power is 80%. Degrees of freedom equals 2. We will review how degrees of freedom were found momentarily. To achieve 80% statistical power, all we need is a sample of 133 respondents. The Gallup sample is much larger than that. We will have ample statistical power. This chi-square test has an advantage over the two-sample z-test for the population proportion. While it is a test of relationships, not proportions, it can compare more than two groups without increasing the probability of a type 1 error. One possible downside is that as a non-parametric test, chi-square has lower statistical power than parametric tests. This should not be a problem with this test because of the large sample size. 
This test uses a two by three contingency table. Two columns, the first yes, and the second no, don't know, no answer. Three rows, Republican, Independent, and Democrat. Why is this test not a three by three contingency table? Three columns, one yes, two no, and three don't know, no answer. Three rows, Republican, Independent, and Democrat. Remember, one limitation of chi-square is that small expected frequencies distort chi-square. Both Republicans and Democrats had fewer than five don't know, no answer responses. Combining don't know, no answer with no resolved this problem. Hence, we have a two by three contingency table, not a three by three contingency table. When there are only two categories, the expected frequencies for the two categories must be five or more. Step two, select the significance level. A 5% significance level has been selected. Step three, state the null and alternate hypotheses. The null hypothesis, a person's attitude towards the legalization of marijuana is independent of his or her political identification. Alternate hypothesis, a person's attitude towards the legalization of marijuana depends on his or her political identification. Step four, compose the decision rule. To do this, we must find the critical value of chi-square. Degrees of freedom are found by multiplying the number of rows minus one, three minus one equals two, by the number of columns minus one, two minus one equals one. There are only two degrees of freedom. The significance level is 0 0.05 or 5%. The critical value for chi-square is 5.991. The decision rule, reject the null hypothesis if chi-square is greater than 5.991. The red area on the right tail is the rejection region. Step five, calculate the test statistic p-value and effect size. The first step in calculating the chi-square test statistic is to find the expected frequencies. The Gallup study provided the observed frequencies. Here is the formula for finding expected frequencies. Multiply the row total times the column total over the grand total. The expected frequencies are shown on this table. We can now complete the calculations for the chi-square test statistic, p-value, and effect size. The value of the chi-square test statistic is very large, 72.181. The p-value is tiny, less than 0.001. There is a moderate effect size, 0.27 or 27%. With an effect size this large, we need not worry that this test is overpowered. This test might be overpowered if the effect size were negligible. Step six, decide and report. Given the huge chi-square of 72.181 and the tiny p-value less than 0.001, the null hypothesis is rejected. Conclusion, a person's attitude towards the legalization of marijuana depends on his or her political affiliation. This test has practical significance for policymakers and business executives because it confirms that political affiliation is associated with the person's attitude towards marijuana legalization. Lastly, let's conduct a chi-square goodness of fit test to determine whether data are normally distributed. You will recall that a normal distribution is a symmetrical distribution centered on the mean, median, and mode this chart illustrates the shape of a normal distribution. Step one, test setup. The research question. Are students' test scores normally distributed? If they are normally distributed, test scores can be analyzed with parametric methods. If they are not normally distributed, test scores must be analyzed with non-parametric methods. The first step in our analysis is to conduct an a priori statistical power calculation. This calculation will be performed using g-power. The effect size is estimated to be 0.30 or 30%. The result of the a priori statistical power calculation indicates that a sample of 143 students will yield 80% statistical power, assuming the significance level is set at 5% and the desired level of statistical power is set at 80%. Why there are five degrees of freedom will be explained later. 
A random sample of 144 test scores is collected. To prepare the data, we need to complete seven steps. The first step is to calculate the mean and standard deviation. Because we are using sample data, we will calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation. If we are using population data, we will calculate the population mean and population standard deviation. The second step is to find the z-value for each random value. Doing these calculations by hand would be very time-consuming. Excel can perform these mundane calculations very quickly. The third step is to create a frequency table showing four columns. Category, Observed Frequency, Probability of the Expected Frequency, and Expected Frequency. The fourth step is to enter the observed frequencies. The fifth step is to enter the probability of the expected frequencies. The sixth step is to find the expected frequencies. The seventh and last step is to combine cells to conform to the chi-square requirement that each cell must have a frequency of five or more. Step one, calculate the sample mean and sample standard deviation. The sample mean is 70.65, a C minus. The sample standard deviation is 23.19. Excel performs these calculations in a few seconds. Step two, finding the Z values for the 144 variables. Excel's standardized function will perform this task quickly. This function has three arguments. One, test score. Two, mean. Three, standard deviation. Step three, Create a frequency table with four columns. The category column is labeled bins. It shows the Z values from negative 3.50 up to positive 3.50 in increments of 0.50. Step four, enter the observed frequencies. Excel's frequency array function will perform this task very quickly. The frequency function has two arguments. First is the data array, which is the column with the data. The second is the bin array, which is the cell range with the bins. An array function is entered holding down the control, shift, and enter keys. This table shows the observed frequencies. Please note the first three cells and the last five cells have zero results. These cells must be combined to meet the chi-square requirement that no cell have fewer than five observations. At a later stage, when these cells are combined, there will be eight cells, negative 2.00, negative 1.50, negative 1, negative 0 0.5, 0, 0, 0, uh, 0.5, 1, and 3.5. The fifth step, the fifth step is to enter the probability of the expected frequencies. This is done using Excel's norm.s.dist function. The expected frequencies are the frequencies for a normal distribution. For the first cell, type equal sign, norm.s.dist, open parentheses, F2, which is the location of the first variable, comma, true. For the second cell, type equal sign, norm.s.dist, open parentheses, F3, comma, true, close parentheses, minus, norm.s.dist, open parentheses, F2, comma, true, close parentheses. Then copy this formula and paste it into the remaining cells. This table shows the probability of the expected frequencies. The sixth step is to find the expected frequencies. This is done by multiplying the observed frequencies by the probability of the expected frequencies as shown on this table. The seventh and last step is to combine cells so each cell has at least five observations. The table on the right shows the combined cells. Step two, select the significance level. A 5% significance level has been selected. Step three, state the null and alternate hypotheses. The null hypothesis, the distribution follows a normal probability distribution. The alternate hypothesis, the distribution does not follow a normal probability distribution. Step four, compose the decision rule. To do this, we must first find the number of degrees of freedom. If we are using population data, degrees of freedom is defined as the number of categories or k minus 1. After combining the categories, there are 8 categories, so we would have 7 degrees of freedom. 
but we are using sample data. We lose two more degrees of freedom, one for using the sample mean and one for using the sample standard deviation. Eight categories minus three leaves five degrees of freedom. To repeat, the selected significance level has been set at 5%. The critical value for chi-square is 11.070. Here is the decision rule with five degrees of freedom and a 5% significance level. Reject the null hypothesis if chi-square is greater than 11.070. Step five, calculate the test statistic p-value and effect size. The calculated value of the chi-square test statistic is 22.664. The p-value is 0.0004 or 0.04%. A p-value this small is reported as less than 0.001. The effect size is 0.3967 or 39.67%, which is a moderate effect verging on a relatively strong effect. Step six, decide and report. Given the high chi-square test statistic of 22.664 and the tiny p-value of less than 0.001, the null hypothesis is rejected. Conclusion, the data are not normally distributed. Non-parametric techniques should be used to analyze these data. The results are statistically significant, but do we have practical significance? The test has practical significance because the information uncovered provides useful information for the researcher. To repeat, a non-parametric technique must be used to analyze the data. Given the moderate effect size, the test is not overpowered. Except where otherwise noted, clear-sighted statistics is licensed under a Creative Commons license. You are free to share derivatives of this work for non-commercial purposes only. Please attribute this work to Edward Volchak. You can access clear-sighted statistics for free, along with its Excel and PowerPoint files on the CUNY Commons. The URL is https forward slash forward slash cuny dot manifold app dot org forward slash projects forward slash clear dash cited dash statistics.